how impressed were both of you by the Lord of the Rings films and what was your reaction on being offered a role in um, The Hobbit Agents? Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was obviously a fan of the movies like, like so many people were. I uh, never thought I'd step foot into Middle Earth, so obviously getting that call was, was a huge deal for me. Um, it was quite surreal as well. I remember meeting Peter and I told him as soon as I walked into the room that I hadn't read The Hobbit and I thought I'd blown it. Um, and he told me all about it then. It was a bit of a 40, 45 minute interview. Um, and it was amazing then to get the call two months later as an actor you kind of let these things go they go into the ether you forget about them and then you get the call and you kind of scream your head off for a couple of days and, and then you spend the next 18 months in this wonderful country New Zealand and, and with Peter in Middle Earth it's surreal yeah mm. I mean I think I'm only now really beginning to absorb what it means because I wasn't you know the, the Tolkien was never uh, it was not, not my sort of uh, the literature I read growing up, uh, uh, and, and film, uh, cinematically, not really the genre I would necessarily follow. So I was quite green to it all when I went out there. I went. Uh, what was in my mind was I was taking a family there, and and that was a completely kind of lifestyle uh, change. Um, but it's only now, having stepped out of, of, of Middle Earth and away from New Zealand, that I'm beginning to to realise that it was the most incredible mm. experience. You know, there's only ever thirteen actors in the world that will have played the thirteen dwarves in the Hobbit, and you're talking to two of them. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's not bad. <laughs> And how would you describe their place among their fellow dwarves, um, staying with you, James? Uh, Bofor's place within the dwarves, but Bofor, his brother Bomber, and the cousin Biffer uh, are sort of separate from the others. We come from the West, we're much less sophisticated, I think. Our, 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 our quest is not quite as felt, you know, we, we, I, I mean, uh, you know, I think we have joined the journey because we like a bit of fighting, a, little, a bit of drinking, we want a bit of crack, uh, that's Irish crack for fun. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, so it's, it's something that we've gone on to kind of just for an adventure. But once we're in there, we're a part of a unit mm -hmm. and we believe very much in, in, in the quest. And uh, we're determined to um, do everything we can to get it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Killy, bro brother to Philly and, and nephew to, to Thorne Oakenshield, um, they're part of the, the royal lin lineage, if you like. I mean, they're Durance folk. Um, so I think it's, it's quite a, an honourable uh, and noble cause for these guys. I mean, Killy. Uh, sees Thorin, I think, as a hero-like figure and, and tries to emulate his courage and, and his commitment to the, to, to the company. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're just, uh, I think with Keeley as well, I mean, he doesn't quite realise what he's getting himself in for until they embark on this huge adventure and stuff. So he's quite naive to the whole thing. I mean, it is, it is uh, almost like a war campaign in many ways for, for, for them, you know. And Dwarf Boot Camp looked like a lot of fun on the production videos with the stick fighting and everything. What, what was that like? What that encompassed? James? Well, yeah, I mean, there was it, uh, uh, at times it was very, very challenging, but ultimately very important. We did um, a lot of physical training. Mm. You know, we, we, were, we were afforded the incredible uh, luxury of having our own personal trainers because we had to build up a lot of stamina because we were carrying a lot of weight during the film. Um, we did uh, yeah, horse training, stunt training. We did dialect coaching, although that wasn't a real challenge for me. <laughs> uh, we did singing. We did dwarf movement. But most importantly of it all, it gave us the opportunity to bond before we started filming. So when we started filming, we could hit the ground running mm -hmm. and we could go on this adventure as dwarves and as actors. Yeah. So the Lord of the Rings um, cast, I think, got tattoos, didn't they, when they were part of the sort of bonding yeah. experience? Do you uh, guys do anything like we that? We were given a wonderful ring that I've forgotten. I had it for the press yesterday and I'm raging. Yeah. It's upstairs in the, in the room somewhere. But uh, it's a lovely ring. It's, I think it's copper or brass or something and it has the, the story on the inside and a little uh, gem from Erebor so it's quite yeah. special and what about any ancient dwarven phrases have you got any uh, ni ikrim uder never trust a wizard yeah yeah that's, <laughs> that's my one as well they're not that into the elves either are they there's oh, a few no. disparaging no. things Ooh, dropped in like about that. them I'm sure yeah <laughs> and you're both new to the Peter Jackson experience mm -hmm. on The Hobbit what can you tell us about working a bit of a half wizard himself I oh, think yeah. well he? I mean he's What's extraordinary about Peter is that he's very down to earth, he's very collaborative, he's quite gentle and laid back, but he has enormous energy on set. He expects you to match that energy, but occasionally, well not occasionally, on a daily basis, you will suddenly see, oh God, there's the visionary, there's the genius. And he just unleashes it at times, and it's something to behold. Yeah. Aidan Tenner, James Nesbitt, thanks very much. Pleasure. Thank you.